Uh, I apologize for going to him 15 minutes late. He's there with us for the rest of the hour. His website's earthpulse.com. Dr. Nick Begich is a well-known for his work on research on harp, mind effects, and more. He's widely reported in these areas as an expert for many publications, government organizations, and private companies. He's testified and advised the EU, uh, you name it. He's also been a uh, tribal affairs leader. His father, of course, a famous U.S. congressman. His brother is a currently serving U.S. senator in Washington, D.C. He's been an expert witness, again, as I mentioned, for the European Parliament, uh, best-selling author, researcher, and he's the guy that proved with the research that harp and weather modification was going on with the facts, not speculation. We only got a few minutes for a break here, Doc, but out of the gates, weather modification, air-based, ground-based, harp-based, now they admit Dubai and Saudi Arabia control the weather, the Russians. Uh, what do you think looking at this storm, Dr. Begich? Well, you know, once again, it's um, a case of not enough um, independent monitoring, really, to, to know to what extent, you know, man might be involved in this. But this is a very technology that uh, I've been reporting on now for, for 15 years, and it's just gotten better and better. In fact, um, in 2007, my last conversations with Dr. Eason, the inventor, inventor of HARP, uh, had whole new theories about weather modification, what was possible. In fact, 1,600 times less energy than he originally thought was needed uh, when he invented HARP. Um, in fact, you can modify weather. So pretty profound technologies. Uh, I'm sure during the course of the hour, we'll get plenty of time to talk about them. A lot of ways to do this today and, um, and even to steer it. But the problem is modeling, figuring out what the effects are. When one country uh, plays with this, um, the effects are unpredictable and, and oftentimes uh, disastrous. And of course, as you know, I'm going to just skip this network break because we got you on late. I want to give you the full time here so you, so you can get rolling now, Dr. Baggage, uh, breaking this down. Uh, talk about the basics for people that don't know this is real because, uh, you know, ABC News makes jokes about it while separately running articles about Bill Gates having a company to create or be able to kill hurricanes. Um, talk about the different weather treaties. Talk about some of the basic patents in science. Sure. Talk about the fact that, hey, this, this does exist. And as you said, a bunch of governments admit they're doing it. So how does that all have a chain reaction butterfly effect? Well, first of all, going back to you know the whole issue of weather modification, the U.S. has been involved in this for many, many years. In fact, I'll, I'll quote one uh, quote. I used it in uh, Earth Rising, the, the Revolution, and it's by um, Secretary of Defense William Cohen when he was in office back in 90, 1997. Now, this is before the 9-11 um, uh, event, and he said, and I quote, others are engaging in e even in an ecotype of terrorism, whereby they can alter climate, set off earthquakes and volcanoes remotely through the use of electromagnetic waves, unquote. Now that's at a time um, before 9-11, attributing the technology to terrorist states. What he's really talking about is the idea of being able to move or manipulate weather for uh, strategic advantage. And it was Rumsfeld who suggested that our treaty, we had a treaty that we had signed with 60 other countries back in the uh, 1970s, uh, where we wouldn't use uh, geophysical manipulation or weather warfare, if you will. Um, and those treaties, uh, he, he wanted to see them eliminated. But the fact is, all of those treaties from that era allow for, in uh, most instances, domestic use, and this one in particular, uh, meaning you could modify weather in your own nation, you just can't do it you know, against someone else in a warfare scenario. The problem is, weather's connected. I mean, you look at a storm and where they originate and where they end up, they don't respect political boundaries, certainly. Yeah, Japan can't pass a law that its Fukushima radiation won't hit the West Coast. <laughs> right, exactly <laughs> right. But you can manipulate, you know, you can manipulate within your own boundaries, and many countries are. In fact, it's hit mainstream media a number of times. The Russians at one point, a uh, Russian company offered uh, to clear smoke out of um, Malaysia and Indonesia years ago when there was... Um, those huge fires down there that were just choking Malaysia, uh, they agreed to, um, or offered anyway, to create an artificial cyclone. And that was, you know, some mainstream media picked up on that and quickly forgot it. But, you know, this is years and years ago. Uh, what we can do today is much more profound. In fact, even manipulating gravity waves, which is something Eastland ended his uh, work in before he passed away. In 2007, he had delivered a paper to the University of Pennsylvania, previously he did work on this for the European Space Agency, NASA, even FEMA, interestingly enough, on weather modification. And in all of those instances, what he essentially showed is how to do it. And he said, look, and he said this to me, and he said this to a number of others, is 
he was unwilling at the state in which he recognized the technology to give it to say military planners from the standpoint that the destructive effects, the unpredictable effects were so profound and our lack of ability to model these on a global scale. I mean, to look at all the factors that contribute to uh, climate and, and the effect of climate in one place versus how it affects everything else, he recognized we, we couldn't do it. If we ever were gonna do weather modification, it ought to be done in the open light of day. Fact is, it's not. Militaries around the world continue to experiment in this area. Uh, when you see storms like this or earthquake events like we've seen in the last few days, I get a, a flood of calls and, and people asking, you know, was it HARP? The fact is, it could be HARP. It could be a number of other systems operating in the world today. There are a bunch of HARP systems all over the place that they even admit. Right. Right, this is exactly right. And the Russians is where all this started going back to the 1970s with the woodpecker signal that many people remember. And it was that irritating noise for ham operators and they triangulated it to these five transmitters in Russia. And those were the first ionosphere heaters, the very first um, in, in now over uh, three, four decades of advancement, uh, much higher, better technology exists today. But looking at this storm, I mean, we've had other meteorologists and people on, and they say, look, it's all manipulated already because, like you said, they've already started manipulating all over the place. And so now it's not the natural weather anymore. But obviously the sun is so powerful. I want to specifically talk about, we know about the cloud seeding, we know about that technology, we know about the Stanford Research Institute and Dr. Ben Livingston and others who by 67, it's now been declassified, what, six years ago, could make hurricanes, kill hurricanes, steer hurricanes, weaken strength, and all of the above, and that they'd done it in the 60s with uh, Atlantic, uh, you know, hurricanes off the coast, just like this one. Uh, now, now, after he came on the show a few times, they got mad at him and kind of threatened him off the show, but the point is, that was on Fox News, AP, you name it. So if in the 60s, they were already messing with Atlantic storms, my issue is we know this stuff is out there, uh, but 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 I've had the director of Harp on. Remember what five years ago we were able to get him on the show, and he said, "Hey, I'm able to ignite the atmosphere." And then a colonel came on during the break and ended the interview. And I'm surprised that that interview didn't get more attention. It was a pretty big deal. I said, oh, "You're, I mean, because you know, here's the colonel bossing the head of it around the civilian head uh, who was bragging about igniting the atmosphere with this stuff." But 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 past that, past just ionizing things. Tell us what Harp does, and then from the patents, this is stuff that you really popularized because your scientific proof 20 years ago. What's the really advanced stuff they've got? Because what Harp's 30 years old. Right. You know, in in terms of the things that can be done fairly easily is the moving of a jet stream. You know, you think about that in terms of steering anything, uh, that's kind of the root of it. HARP can easily do this. In fact, any ionospheric heater uh, in the world, which is what they generally refer to these, because they actually heat the ionosphere, they lift it up. Now imagine a 30 mile uh, diameter column um, moving up several hundred kilometers into space, and then all the lower atmosphere moving in to fill that space. So this alters pressure systems, this alters can alter the flow of a jet stream around it. Uh, when you start to look at just the simplest way, uh, and then you predict downstream. Now, years ago, back in 2002, uh, Scientific America had a feature story on um, weather modification and, and weather generally. But one of the things they show is uh, the jet stream coming just above Harp, making a dog leg, and then going back south. Well, what it did is move a jet stream out of uh, the Dallas area all the way over um, to Orlando, Florida, where it dropped a couple of tornadoes right in the middle of town. And many might remember that event, especially those who live in that, that region. But this was a uh, very simple uh, uh, application, uh, something you could do with, with HARP or any of these instruments around the world. The, the other thing um, was m m manipulating gravitational waves. Now that was the very last idea, um, which means you use a lot less energy and use a very long wavelength, which you can generate um, by oscillating or manipulating the ionosphere, which is this energized layer that begins about 30 miles above the Earth's surface, extending out beyond that. When you start to manipulate that, you change it from DC to AC, so it turns into this giant broadcast antenna in the sky. Now imagine you just converted this huge energy potential both into a broadcasting system and you've amplified the signal that you've sent up. So now you can bombard the Earth, uh, you can manipulate on a very foundational level a gravity wave, which then has 
reactions within the entire uh, way in which you can manipulate, you know, moving up the chain weather or moving in a different direction and affecting uh, fault lines, pressure built up uh, where earthquakes could occur and actually causing that energy to release at a very specific time and perhaps in a very specific place. So pretty versatile instrument when you think about it, but the root of it is electromagnetic energy, the manipulation of energy across a very big bandwidth sure. to modulate the signal uh, and actually harmonize or resonate with whatever you're trying to affect. So you can do quite a bit with heart, a lot which is in the mainstream uh, literature these days. How does the aerosol spraying uh, fit in? Because we know there are big secret programs. They've they've admitted programs and they admitted patents to have stuff added to jet fuel that then aerosolizes and things. But then a lot of the science I see says that it's actually the antennas are making regular ice crystals resonate differently and are forming larger trails. So that's why uh, we're seeing more condensation trails that aren't even really chemtrails. It could be uh, either, either situation, but here's what happens when you introduce a chemical element, say into an environment that you subject a certain population to. If you send a signal in and say that's um, a, a, a considered maybe toxic in really large quantities, but not so toxic in these very small quantities, once it's in the body or into tissue, if you send a signal in that resonates or harmonizes at that same frequency, you can trick the body into believing that it's gotten a massive load of that chemical and begin reacting accordingly with the same kinds of symptoms. But when you do blood work and you check, uh, it just it's a mystery illness. No one can figure but, but it out. Doctor, give that in layman's terms. You're talking about a binary weapon system where one part is chemical, uh, but 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 then being resonated with, but it's untraceable. Right, exactly right. And so you end up with a very toxic effect or a um, an altering effect for sure, but anyone outside of that doesn't experience it. And then when you turn the signal off and people come into that area, they get minimal levels of that toxin, so it doesn't affect them at all. Incredible uh, weapon, incredible weapon. Yeah, and it's, you know, when you think about it, it's one of many um, technologies, but they're all revolve around the same idea, which is this oscillating electromagnetic fields and what you can do with them and pulsing them, or think about it like a hammer banging a nail. The swing is the frequency, but the pulse rate is every time it taps the head of that nail. Well, you can set up a different kind of signal when you're doing this to the ionosphere, this electromagnetic layer. While we fight to retain our liberty, while we fight to expand globalism, we have to realize we're talking about a very powerful combination of power. Renowned author and expert Joel Scalzi breaks down the globalist plan to shut down America and stage a new world war. In one day, America will go from day to night. And if you haven't prepared in advance, there's not enough time to prepare in 24 hours, even if you saw it that early. Coming to the Info War in November is our new documentary film presentation. Strategic relocation is a systematic way to think strategically in the future about how do I safeguard. Joel Skousen, Strategic Relocation. The freeways are going to be crowded, they're going to run out of gasoline, they're going to run out of food, and then they're going to start to go north and south of those freeways. Joel Skousen is renowned as one of the world's foremost experts in strategic relocation and the securing of your home. We talk about natural disasters, the health environment, we talk about pollution, the water quality. My personal experience about being in every one of these states. Government is digging in for the organized incremental collapse of society and world war. The U.S. isn't building huge underground bases and bunkers because of some terrorist threat. They know that a massive nuclear attack is coming. They want that attack to come. Most people won't even be ready and won't be able to get out of town when any of these nuclear weapons fall because there'll be absolute panic. There is no preparedness without strategy. What I tell people uh, is that you do have time. Prepare wisely in advance. This Christmas, give the gift of preparedness. Strategic Relocation, the film, with Joel Skousen and Alex Jones.
Absolutely. We've been fighting an uphill battle against the globalists being laughed at for saying there was a private banking cartel establishing world government with a eugenics-based philosophy of scientific tyranny. But now that information is becoming very mainstream. The danger is it'll just become mainstream and accepted that we live under this tyranny. Or we can become mainstream and we can reject it. There's seven plus billion of us. Humans have incredible power. Dr. Nick Begich, multiple degrees. I'm not going to get into it all. Prestigious family as well. Of uh, Great people. His uh, late father, a congressman who did a lot, uh, stood up against tyranny. His brother serving in the Senate of the United States as well. Uh, you can find out more about him at earthpulse.com, where all his books and videos are located. We sell them all as well at infowars.com, infowarsstore.com. We're going to go back to him in a moment, and we will get to some calls as well. But what he's talking about here, he's just giving you the, the shorthand. You need to understand something. There are hundreds of patents he can just list to you. In fact, I'll get him to lift some off the top of his head. You can go look them up. He says, Alex, you're worried about chemicals in the food and water. That's very primitive, one level. It's electromagnetic. And then I went and did research on this. Folks, whenever I go to UT psychology department and they let me in, people we've got inside, or whenever I get intel from MIT, from scientists, it's all about frequency pulses. I mean, you go by laboratory after laboratory with monkeys strapped down, and, and, they're just, and, it, and it's TV shows, but it's flashing lights. It's why kids have convulsions when they watch Pokemon. That's in our new issue of InfoWars magazine. They're literally lowering the brainwaves, lowering the consciousness. They are literally putting people into trance states. That's why they laugh at you. And, and I mean, they admit billions of dollars paid by Obama, but that's just Obama and the government. It's been going on for decades to put pro-government run healthcare uh, messages in sitcoms and dramas. That's one level of propaganda where they overtly, in the sitcoms, the dramas, the cop shows, are anti-gun, anti-family. You can argue, well, isn't socialist health care good to give poor free health care? But it's globalist health care. It's bad people. Now, if you believe in socialism, which I don't, it, it, these are evil people that want to make you dependent so they can hurt you. And my point is, there's a war against consciousness. And it, we, we lead the world in cancer. We lead the world in diabetes, in obesity, in neurological disorders. They're killing us. And I have the White House science R right here. That document cam, guys, EcoScience is on the table. It's, it's online. It's been scanned online. Just type in text of EcoScience, John P. Holdren, right over there. And he says we're going to put stuff in the water. Well, guess what they are? <clears throat> he wrote that back in 1970. He's now the White House science czar. You hear Ted Turner say get rid of 90% of people. This is what they're doing. And, and, and they're robbing us of our consciousness. Some of us, just like a lot of insects, end up being immune to poison. A certain percentage are immune. Some people just get more angry by this stuff. I think, I'm, by the grace of God, you know, I am not fully immune to this, but a lot of us were either immune. It's like some people are immune to certain types of snake bites and things. We're immune. The general public is not. Okay? And they, they're, they're hurting bad. Uh, doctor, I'm ranting here. It's just that everything is about consciousness. And go over what you're talking about here because... Because you're getting into government documents here. And, and, you know, again, it's all about give you a chemical or something, and then they have a frequency that resonates. I mean, it's a perfect system, and, and, and this is what we're under. I mean, I read about the feds paying at police departments everywhere to put in super fast flashing fluorescent lights that, that, that data transmit with the new computers. And then I go look up the patent, and it's based in a system for putting you into a trance. I mean, we if, if people think we're zombies now, we ain't seen nothing yet. They're just trying to get away with it, engaging it, and we're all in a giant laboratory. I'm ranting here, but correct me you, if I'm wrong. You're, you're exactly right. In fact, um, you can use any oscillator. Uh, we did um, a book you guys carry it, uh, Controlling the Human Mind, and it was this discussion of, again, oscillating, pulsing electromagnetic fields. With or without chemicals, you know, it depends on what you want to do, but you can manipulate the brain to a very high resolution. And this is what's, um, what's changed over time is the resolution. Think about it as uh, what we're doing right now on a Skype. You couldn't do that a few years ago. But as we've refined and got tighter and tighter on our technology bandwidth, um, we're able to utilize them much more efficiently. Microprocessors are a thousand times smaller than 25 years ago. That's the technology we know about. Right, and, and it's much, much, much better than that. But think about the brain as the ultimate um, technology, the human brain, uh, in terms of being able to interact with it. But at the same time, the human potential, which is being interfered with, because part of the big 
uh, research in all of this over the last 50, 60 years, the biggest revelation was how powerful the human mind is, not just all the human minds together, but every single individual human mind is more powerful than the biggest computers in the world. Uh, if we ever really stepped into our full potentials as created human beings, it would be much, much different scenario. In fact, the easiest way to keep that from happening uh, is to keep the population in kind of a constant state of worry, anxiety, and fear. And what happens is the brain itself can't reach these certain states of consciousness where your best intellectual work is done, your most creative work is done. Um, well, that's fact, my greatest frustration is that when I'm out sitting under a tree by a natural creek or something with my children, it, the whole universe opens up, in, in the poetry, the understanding, and then I get on air with the frantic directing things and working, and I lose like 90% of my mind. But but everybody knows that happens. And, and also, yep. people misinterpret, doctor, and I want your take on this. They think, some of them, uh, that I'm up here trying to scare people. It's the opposite. I believe when right. people know how serious it is, we'll take action. It's exactly. the opposite of fear. I am literally not even worried about them killing me or putting me in a dungeon because I want humanity to go to the next level. I understand that it is societal, cultural, species, right. death of consciousness if this enemy wins. And, right. and, and the power is there. It's so frustrating. Right. It's right in front of us. You know, every individual, you know, the American Revolution, I think the statistics I read, it started with a 6% popular idea. You know, and you translate it into election season, you know, half the people that can register actually don't. Half the people that are registered don't vote. And half the people that do vote make the decisions. That's only 12.5% of the population potentially of potential voters. It's stirring it up where just a few don't make it makes a huge, huge difference. And vice versa, stirring it up so everybody does show up makes it too. Um, and, and I think that's really important in at least local elections and national elections. I think it's kind of on the on the presidential scale anyway. It's, you know, which which piece of bad news do you want? But laying that aside, when you look at the manipulation of populations in a political season, think about the television ads and all of the media ads that come at you. They do a couple things. One is what you alluded to before, the flicker rate. Um, if you actually modulate a television set during a commercial at a specific rate to put someone in a highly suggestive state, and you're already kind of there. You know, when you think about people coming home stressed out after work if they have a job and then sitting in front of the television while their spouse is hollering at them and trying to get their attention, they don't even hear them because they're in a light trance state. And then all you have to do is dial it up a little finer, which television ad, and if you look at the white wall behind you when you're watching a television show and look at the flicker rate, it, it will cause you within 20 seconds to hit that trance-like state where then the ad, just the regular ad, becomes much more anchoring for the majority of the population. Um, not for everyone, but the majority. And the fact is you don't need very much in close elections to make the difference. And I think that's, again, it's something unregulated. Every school of psychology teaches frequency following response is what we're talking about here. And you can use any modulator. You can use the Internet, radio, television. Um, you can mo modulate a signal in the uh, in the atmosphere using big systems like HARP. You can use uh, yes, sir. And, 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 and cell phones, towers and DARPA has even been in the Baltimore Sun admitting this 12 years ago. I saw an article. Right. The patents are all there. You've written right. books on it. And here, here's what's incredible. Darren McBreen on a job many years ago happened to be out at a monkey farm and they had the apes all and the monkey strapped in with flickering, you know, a, a, a television. I've been into the UT um, facility and the guy's like, oh, you're not supposed to see this. You didn't see this. And he punched up the monkey farm out at Bastrop with monkeys with wires in their heads and all this stuff. And I was like, whoa. And then I was led into other areas, how to flicker and make women sexually excited. That was a whole laboratory. I mean, the colleges aren't even for the young people. You know, they're off in other buildings. That's all. Well, you, I mean, you're a professor. You're. I mean, you know that. I mean, it's a total front now. And 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 I'm telling you, every, they are spending almost all their time just on flicker rates, testing different things. I mean, it's incredible. Well, there's a lot of contracts that have been let in the area of of the mind. And in fact, there was a couple on electronic telepathy, and I think we talked about them a few years ago uh, to the University of California, where they were looking at the brain in real time, and then trying to replicate the signals that they see as complex as that is and then send it into another brain to see if the you know the same thought could be generated this kind of technology is is out there it's been advancing 
Light flicker rates from manipulating behavior is well known. There's a couple great patents on this by uh, Monroe. And when you look at the whole history of um, the study of the mind, it's become the most exciting thing in a lot of places, I mean, in terms of what it offers, because the same technologies that are, that are being used to suppress our potentials are also those technologies that help us understand what our potentials are in the Exactly, first and the transhumanist that came out of the eugenicist Again, I'm not saying in all transhumanism would be bad if someone chose to, you know, just, just, you know, for a site or whatever it is. But the eugenicists claim they want to empower humanity at the top. But I've read the books they put out. I know you have. They have these elite conferences where the billionaires show up, close to the public. Right. But then it leaks. They're at these meetings, as Bill Joy wrote uh, in, in, in 2000 in the April issue of Wired, deciding how they're gonna just get rid of us, that they're gonna transcend and not give us any of this. It is, ab and then they're the worst people. They're the, of course, they wanna hoard it all. They're never gonna get all this year. They're not gonna do this to us and then have God allow them to have all that. I mean, you reap what you sow. The universe is bigger than them and their computers and everything. And I think, you know, they need to be honest about this. And we need to have a real debate about the future of the species instead of them dumbing everybody down because right. they're, they're not immune from what they're doing. Everything they're doing to us is coming back on them. How does the elite deal with this? Because I know you've run in some pretty high level circles. You know, it's interesting because everyone has a deep philosophy that I've ever met in high position. And if you figure out that, you really get their motivation. And a lot of them... Um, quite frankly, are, are, in my view at least, motivated by the wrong things. And self-interest becomes the governing uh, issue and, and a lack of understanding of, of the broader picture, if you will. It is about gain, you know, the other guy losing and someone winning. And what I observe all over the world is the same things are being sold here as have been sold, uh, say, in Russia. The retirement programs in Russia, the uh, risk of their social security system, you know, they have privatized social security too. Uh, but all the things they are doing there in Europe, we're doing here in the U.S. It's like, and it is a global plan. I mean, the politics is becoming a, um, a cross-cultural where it applies all the way across. And we, we think we're in a private debate. We think we're in a national debate, but we're not. We're in an international debate on all levels, whether we see it or not. And most of us don't travel 50 miles from our home, but those of us that do see the same parallels popping up in banking, in finance, in regulation of the way we live and the freedoms that we have or don't have anymore. The fact is it is globalists uh, taking it away from us in a in, in an incredible uh, in an incredible way. And again, they know how to dominate and win the game, but the point is they're destroying their own species in the process, and that's the thing. It's, it's like you've got to be individualistic. They say come into the communal to take away your individualism. No, 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 you're an individual, but you make decisions of how you want to be treated. That's how you treat others, because when everybody has that attitude, civilizations rise when you have the, the, the civilization of pee in the pool because I want to, well, everybody starts doing it, and then the pool becomes toxic. I mean, it, it really comes down to that, that the globalists are almost like idiot savants. They're idiots when it comes to love and the larger universe, but they're, they're savants when it comes to technocratic evil and the will to power. Uh, you, know, you can go back to uh, Zbigniew Brzezinski's writings on this, you know, one of the formers of the Trilateral Commission, National Security Advisor to Jimmy Carter, and, and I quote from him often that, uh, you know, Between Two Ages was a book about technologies and how technology was shaped the world geopolitically. It was written in the 70s, early 70s, and if you read it, you swear it's a history because it's exactly um, that way. In other words, whether he was forecasting or writing the roadmap, and I think and a lot of others do, he wrote the roadmap. Now, my dad was at UT in the 60s, and they already had a lot of the technology that came out 20 years later, and they were all telling him everything that was going to happen. I mean, right. it, it, I mean, th listen, we're on a plan. They knew what the web was going to do. DARPA created, they, they've got the whole, th it's all 50-year and 100-year plans, as Brzezinski writes. Yeah, and the you know the World Wide Web. PBS did a piece on this. They called it the the next generation of this, the World Wide Mind, which is the idea of connecting every mind together in some artificial way. That I I find pretty objectionable, and I think most people would. But the fact that people are taking that science to that direction without regulation, without consideration of what human beings are fundamentally, I think is a, is a huge error. The other part of this is. If we do, if a very few reach their full potential as humans, 
um, everything changes. The, the existing order changes. When it becomes truly transparent, it falls apart. Because when you really look into what governments have done and the level of corruption, not just over, you know, in some third world uh, backwater, but right here, uh, we've done it with regulation and the niceties of law, but the result is the same. Uh, power just dictates what happens in this country. If you have money, you determine access to legislators, influence on those legislators, and outcomes from those legislators. Because if you walk into your U.S. Senator's office and you ask for 30 minutes of time, likelihood of getting it are about zero. But if you write a check for five grand for their campaign committee and walk in and ask for that half hour, I guarantee you, you're going to figure out, they're going to figure out the time. But the problem is that money, moneyed interest, special interests decide everything anymore. Unless the politician specifically stays grounded with the people that elected them, it, it always drifts this way. Um, you know, my brother, uh, uh, Mark, at one time in his political career early on, he said, don't trust any of them and you won't be disappointed. And that's a family been involved in this for 50 years. And I can tell you, um, hold everyone's feet to the fire, no matter who they are, because the very system they enter mm -hmm. begins to corrupt from the first day. The best advice I can give to anyone in public office who's new to the game is stay true to yourself. Stay in touch with your constituents reach out to the people that elected you because otherwise you lose your heart and your soul to a game that is just cold hearted. Well, sure. And, and you know, uh, powerful men always get us into huge wars that a lot of times even destroy them because it's about one upping and the very dominant instinct that got them where they are. They don't know when to pull back. They don't know when to stop. And I'm speaking directly to the you know evil ones out there. I can historically know where this is going. And the, the, the technocrats aren't going to make it out of this either. And, and and they they've made a lot of mistakes too but because they're in charge they're able to just keep going and doubling down and I just say pull back stop don't do it no because it's going to end all this it's going to end your grandkids it's going to end their kids it's going to be the death of us everything we said came true everything we've done has been right Dr. Nick Baggage is our guest. We've got Bob Fletcher, who also has exposed weather weapons and systems are going to be coming up. And I will get to some of your phone calls, Otter and Chris and Kenny and Hunter. And Alicia's been holding the longest. We'll get to her uh, first here in the next segment. Doc, in closing, uh, your books, your videos, uh, Earth Rising, uh, all of them, Angels Don't Play This Harp. Uh, it's all available at InfoWarsStore.com. People can support your work and my work as well. But uh, we've got to get you back up in the near future for two hours to go over all the other emerging technologies and things that are going on. I mean, uh, in closing, uh, if you go back 25 years ago, the establishment didn't let DU get used because they knew it would kill the troops, uh, not just the enemy. Uh, they, you know, 20, 30 years ago, they cared more about radioactive accidents. Uh, everything. It just seems like the establishment doesn't care about anything anymore. Uh, I mean, are they drinking their own Kool-Aid or, or do, do you have a comment on this phenomenon I see of more and more recklessness? I, I just think that's that's the best descriptor. It is recklessness. It's a lack of awareness, and a lack of consciousness. You know, slow down uh, people out there. Listen to the information. Don't get afraid, but get empowered. Start stepping into it. Calm the mind and use your mind again. That's how this stuff changes and it changes one person at a time. Do what you can in the neighborhood you're in, is what I say. What you can, what you know you can do, try and accomplish that. Everyone has a sphere of influence. Exercise it in the best way, the most conscious way you can, not out of fear, but out of confidence in knowing that you're making change. Alex, I always appreciate being on with you because I know it's about making change. Um, we're, it's tired of, uh, you know, all of us in so many ways. Economics isn't just trickle down economics. It's trickle down society and culture and opportunity uh, that's happened. And it's an elite that wants to stay that way and maintain that position at the expense of everyone else. There's, in my observation in the world is there's plenty of resources. We can all do very, very well. Uh, the planet is much bigger. Uh, we're uh, ants scratching the surface. Uh, we need to be good stewards, make it happen in a different way. Uh, vote early. I mean, it's, this disaster may be passing um, as people are suffering with the cleanup, but anything can happen between now and Election Day. Uh, vote at least in the local elections where it might make a difference. Uh, at the presidential level, um, Godspeed. Maybe we'll see a change there. 
uh, maybe the fire will burn hot enough where someone will make some better decisions. Well, that's the issue is uh, even if people are corrupt, they've got to love their kids. And uh, yeah. I mean, it, it is it is really insane what the establishment, the, the GMO, all of it that's coming out. And, 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 you know, really, it's this when good men do nothing, evil men triumph, as the founders said. Right. And we always let the worst person in the room who wants the power dominate and run everything. It's time for people that, that want a civilization to go, you know what, I'm standing up against you and I don't care how this ends. You got to go through me before you get to do this. And if we just start being a little harder, you know, to corral, things are going to get better. I mean, it's that simple. But it just be, be, you know, being yes men is going to destroy us. That's exactly right. I mean, it's stepping into the power of that we are, what we're created to be. Um, I believe we're created in the image of a creator. That's not weak people. That's very powerful people. Exercise your free will in the way that changes the world. That's all we can do. And I'm I'm a pathological optimist, I say, because I'm not going to give up. And uh, I know you aren't either, Alex. And maybe we'll see this thing turn around. I mean, sometimes big disaster brings about an awakening that um, no one can stop. No, no, I agree. We've got to admit how bad it is to rise to the occasion and turn it That's around. Right. The sleeping giant that is the humanity needs to awaken. Dr. Nick Megich, we salute you. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. We look forward doing it again. Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want.